Yo, greetings. I am Lies and I use she, her. And I am Scandal and I use they, them. And, and let's play, play a game, game together. together. Yeah. In fact, let's play this very atmospheric game on this apparently very atmospheric day where we happen to have rain. These aren't exactly the outfits I imagined, but they'll work because we have no other clothes. Uh, yep. Well, if I look as damned in as you do in yours, they'll definitely help. <laughs> <laughs> so that's right, we should all look sexy. <laughs> we all need to look sexy. For what? For what? Wait. Okay, Wait. I have to say, if ours looks like his, it we could are be in freaking hilarious. There's a lot of titty. Like, Kohai has large titties. <laughs> It would happen. Unlike anybody else in this game, as far as I can tell. Yes. A little bit, you know, Pasha. Portia. Except pa Portia doesn't really have... That's why she's she's actually... a little bit. Compared to everyone else. Not really. It's just her character design. The thing <laughs> is, so she actually, it seems like she has pretty small boobs. Because she's she seems like she's supposed to be a little larger with, with smaller boobs. That... So proportionally, they're a bit smaller. But they are definitely larger than some of the other characters. Yeah, I don't just think Just how they're agree. placed. Okay. <sighs> Help with what? Because it's a good question. Um, he shifts his gaze from wall to wall, even the ceiling and floor, before he leans in to speak by my ear. I think he's investigating to see if the room, much like the garden, is filled with eyes and ears. Yes. Yes, okay. Yes. I thought we would feel more of a presence here. No one is watching us right now. In my private room, I hope not. Of a guy like him. Suspicious. It's almost like he's hiding. Uh, but Nadia will need to see for herself what we're dealing with. My plan is to lock him out. Asra, if you think he should be watching us, and it's weird that he isn't, don't you think he should have been watching us in the back? Well, yeah, but we weren't talking about anything important. Oh, so it wasn't weird then? No. Okay. <laughs> he's always weird though. Does <laughs> it? I said that honestly, his king is not my king. But how about that one? <laughs> Maybe he also is embarrassed by nudity, like some people are, and so he couldn't watch us then. But especially now he's some characters who are incredibly fucking arrogant and all about themselves. I love it, like that particular stereotype where they're like, ah, yes, this thing, and then there's nudity and they explode and can't handle it and they run away. I have that. That's definitely because they're hand. like, oh, you're secretly approved. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> that one. Are you just very sensitive to things? You're going. I will show off, and I will be dripping the sexuality beautiful. and. Air Arrogant and in your face and can tolerate anything. Nothing flaps me. Takes off your shirt. And <laughs> freaks out, runs away. Well, because the thing is, is, for the most part, since they're dominating most of what's going on, you really typically are not supposed to be able to combat that, right? Mm -hmm. And most people exactly. aren't going to go, I'm going to respond, rips off shirt. <laughs> Because <laughs> they've already done that, and you're usually like, oh, I'm not going to be like them. Right. You know? All right, lure, lure him out. This is my plan. She has been generous enough to make the arrangements. This will be the hook. I don't know how we made the arrangements since we were not, I was not at least off screen with her for any period of time without you being. <laughs> you used so... maybe your telephone <laughs> while I was under the water briefly. No, what I used was the <laughs> Faust phone. <laughs> <laughs> Except that they're not going to bring that up here because actually that's a really good quick. So if I'd come to this and um, I didn't know anything about Julian's route, it was in Julian's route where we discovered that you could basically talk to uh, one familiar and it, and it will to talk to another, another familiar, familiar and then that one could talk to their master. And it, it is literally playing telephone because as for saying something, the familiar interpreting, telling the other familiar, them interpreting, and then telling Nadia and then her interpreting what that means. Right, exactly. So I think that's it, like really it's interesting. It's familiar telephone. Uh-huh, but it's also, I'm like, so one, where did Faust go for our bath? Which is a weird thing, by the way. Because um, we didn't actually, I don't think, track where... I feel like Faust was dismissed at some point in the garden and didn't come in with us. Oh, that's true. I feel like that's a thing that happened in reference to, like, you can hang out with the owl or go do the stuff you want to do or something. Right. So she hasn't been with us for a while, but I don't remember why... But also, again, there's nothing here. Like it would have, it would have, it would have bugged me to really indicate even a possibility of how they would have this because Faust is not around. Uh, Chandra is not. Uh, Chandra is not around. I was to say, yeah. So generous Chandra. enough to make what arrangements? Because we didn't ask her to make any. Uh, I guess maybe off screen while we were walking from on the veranda to indoors without any of it ever being mentioned, but us being present for it. 
It happens. Like, because there are short hops you can do where you can basically then reveal that there was a conversation, but I genuinely cannot think of a scenario in which Kohai was not there. And since Kohai is supposed to be the player's eyes into the world, Kohai should this have mentioned doesn't it. work. Yeah, Kohai should have mentioned it. So, uh, Nadia having made any arrangements, unless the arrangements are, you're allowed to be in my castle, that doesn't work. Yeah, that's a, that'll be the hook. But we still need to bait him. Leave that to me. Are you going to be the bait? Then I leave the bait to you, and the outfit may help. I just put in two and two together. No, no, okay. No. Two brisk knocks are our only warning. Pep, pep. And Asra leans out of my space before Portia lets herself in. Why did she do that? Was he leaning? Oh, yeah, he was leaning close, I guess. Yeah, he was leaning close, but like uh, her eyes move between us, flashing with interest at like, our garments i assume i know portia is kind of like i can't decide like they seem to want to be like she'll follow all the rules she'll do all the things and then also then she runs around and constantly does stuff that i would not expect a character like her to really do based on the way that they seem to have implied she sneaks slash, around a bit for yeah. somebody who's completely you well, know um, above board and she just walked into your room where you could have been naked it's true. Two quick knocks are the only warning you get. It looks like from this face, though, and her looking at both of you with interest, like, I was trying to walk in on you, which is weird. Yeah. That's what it is. The thing is, is that I've actually seen that in romances. Mm -hmm. It's a weird trope that I don't quite understand. Like, it feeds into that voyeuristic thing where you're going, oh, no, you could have been caught, which is actually very common, as far as I understand, in actually a lot of fantasies mm -hmm. of going the risk of being caught, but never actually being caught. It adds See, to the, the, the romantic and sexual tension. I would say that one, and I'm also familiar with it being used for another reason, though I don't mm. access either of them personally. Right. The other one is to make you jealous because potentially they'd have seen your partner naked. Oh. To go the, she might have seen him or he might have seen her. Because it's always very hetero when I've seen it. Yes. I was like, I but it is it. very much this, it can also be used in this very possessive kind of way of, you might have seen my love interest in a, a compromised or vulnerable state. Unacceptable. I, actually, that's a really good point. I wonder if that, and this is me just speculating, okay? Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's actually contributed to to supposedly, allegedly, people uh. not liking Portia very much. Huh. Because she came in in the very beginning where a lot of people, as far as I can tell, did largely play Asra, it First, seems. yeah. Um, even with the old crowd. Uh, like, you get introduced to this character who is willing, basically, to disrupt your space, and since a lot of... Uh, typically, anyone who's been uh, described as you have to be female for the rest of your existence, uh. you've, you're, you're usually trained on other women are the enemy. Right. Okay, so I was going to say, so if That would largely... explain also some of the stuff with Nadia and also some of the stuff now here with Portia. I like what you're saying. I hadn't thought about that. So one of the things we've been exposed to, in case you're not on the same train of thought we are, is that um, Portia's route has not been as popular as other routes. Um, the, Supposedly. Uh, Nyx Hydra's been very uh, vocal about it, whether or not, whatever the statistics are, we don't know. Yeah. I say, and the thing is, is um, several people have talked about um, just online going, yeah, she's really sweet and she's really cute and she's cool, but like you get like big sister energy not romance energy from her right and um what my friend has pointed out here is if if indeed you met her here first where we pointed out that one she was really easily startled and came to conclusions pretty quickly when she first when we first see her on screen and she's been exposed to faust right and then two she does the wow the lady's personal bath Mm -hmm. Like she's trying to hype it up for you for some reason mm -hmm. or really just going you the player should think it's a big deal she sounds not to be offensive, in this route, with no other context at all, and knowing nothing about her and no external materials, she sounds a little inane and a little bit whiny. And if you have been cultured in a way of, I've been raised as a girl, girls and women are the enemy. Like, that is the traditional uh, American upbringing. And I think it's also very popular in other countries of, you know, girls or, or women being you're pit competing. against each other. Yeah. Because your social value is possibly lessened by the presence of them. And in this case, especially since the Asra is the only other one that you assume really would be being looked at. Mm -hmm. um, and as even though Nyx Hydra says it in basically their Twitter canon, uh, that that Asra is non-binary, but I'm going, you also said that there's no gender in this world, so how the hell are you non-binary when you don't have any genders? When there's no binary. Yeah, when you there is no be, binary. You can't, so I'm going to say, and this is, I, I know, 
This has been hard to explain to a couple of people that have said it to you, but listen very closely if you're, if you're willing, if you're interested. You cannot have non-something if you don't have something. So you can't have non-binary if there's no binary. Non-binary isn't just a word, it's literally a I'm not part of the binary. Right. And so, yeah, if they say this is a post-gender world, there is no gender binary, there's no gender at all, mm -hmm. so you can't be non-binary. So them saying in their own canon, he's non-binary, but there is no binary, is like saying, he's not a rabbit, rabbits don't exist. I can't identify as non-rabbit if rabbits are not a thing that have ever existed ever. Yeah, which so, is really strange, because again, like, I don't even know what to do with that information. So based on, like, just what you see here, to me, this really is like, oh, she this could be, come like, off. weird, like, sort of, again, that sort of playful big sister thing, but also sort of trying to make you more protective or defensive of going, you are trying to sneak a peek on us, and that's inappropriate. I say, and if you're set up to, one, have her... Uh, because she wasn't originally a root. I don't know if she was always intended to be, but she wasn't She wasn't originally. Yeah. I was going to say, and the thing is, is if she's set up more in the way that I've been exposed to her here, where she's really very much just a side character, and she doesn't really have a lot of personality on her own, she just kind of shows up and is like, she's, wow, she's and She's an interesting little exposition character, basically. Uh -huh. She seems like vaguely like, I'm sort of the dump, I'm here to signal we're moving things onward. I was going to say, and yeah. if you were introduced to her in that way, and also with some possible, like, rivalry or threatening aspects then and that's your foundational knowledge of based her, on your sociological upbringing then like, i can see like, how it could be yeah. hard to like her later and especially to romance her at any rate yes she's flashing with interest yeah yeah there you two the room's been ready for your very mysterious to your very mysterious specifications which we never gave to anybody let alone her because it wasn't in a wait when he leaned in and whispered extremely briefly to Nadia, was that his extremely specific mysterious specifications? Oh, I forgot about that. I mean, can you imagine, like, in the few seconds he leaned in and whispered to her, he said, I need a room, I need these things done to it, and, um, and then leans back out. And then Nadia did that well, while they were in the bath. Well, it's also the room. What is the room? Like I said, if he goes, I need a room, it needs to be like this very quickly. It, then no, my question goes, here is going, is it a specific room? Oh, okay. Is it the room you asked for or a specific room in the castle? That's yes. a good question. Uh, because now I'm actually kind of curious, going like, okay, so how would you do that? And also, why then, in any case, why would Nadia ever fucking believe you? <laughs> I mean, uh, she would believe Astra because, of course, you know, magician, powerful. Mysterious. If he wants something, sure, why not? I mean, she didn't say no. I guess. Because if he'd have whispered into her and she went, why? Right. Then you'd have known she didn't agree to that and that she doesn't like it. But if yeah, he just goes, she just kind of acquiesces rather quickly. Powerful stranger, but you have social awareness of who they are. They're a figure in your town. Right. And they lean in after returning their opinion. I need a room to them. Set up with very specific, mysterious things. specifications. And you don't say mysterious, you just say what they are. And then she tells Pasha and, 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 or Portia, and Portia's like, okay, done, whatever. Specifications. But um, I just say, the only time I can guess is that they would have made the planning to our plan would be that extremely short whisper so he and nadia would have a really good understanding of exactly what all the terms meant so like say you have very popular colloquialisms in your area and so you don't have to specify what a tea towel is or how it should be folded like a swan mm -hmm. um those kind of things and so you just say i need a room tea table tea towel folded like a swan in the center thank you and that's it mm -hmm. And, and something like that. But because otherwise, if you're like, I need it with such things as a nice dinner. What's a nice dinner? Mm -hmm. Or anything like that. So it'd have to be pretty pretty universally understandable. Yes. I'm not going to ask what you all have planned for all that food. But don't go wasting the golden goose. It is about food. I hadn't even read it, it is, yet. Amazing. It's the wine again. Actually, okay, so my friend and I left. Mm -hmm. uh, so there actually is, a, I think we've mentioned this once before, but we actually did search up Golden Goose Wine, and it actually does exist, but it's like a Californian thing. Yes. And so I was like, I wonder if that was actually one of the big things that um, the writers, or at least a writer, or the, the writer or the artist were drinking uh -huh. at the time. We're like, we should just drop this in. It doesn't mean necessarily that, because Golden Goose sounds like fun. a family favorite or something. Right. Or they might have just searched wines with fun names. Right. Sometimes writers do that. Yeah, they do. All right. Anyway. Uh -huh. We won't. Uh. That's all I ask. Right this way, magicians, the master chamber awaits. So he did ask for a specific room, it sounds like. Oh. 
not only for specific things, but also a specific room. So the room isn't only the room you requested, but the room. What's the master? Are we going to Nadia's room? I, I kind of think master chamber sounds like bed chamber more than it does like hall or room or whatever. So well, that's what I mean. It's yeah, like Nadia's so sleeping chamber, maybe right? Maybe Nadia's bedroom. I, the master suite. Or or did did Nadia and Lucio ever share a room? That'd be the master bedroom, master suite. Oh no, they did separate. Remember in Nadia's route? Uh, what I mean is. Did they ever have their own room together, ever? Or when they were married, did they immediately and always have separate suites and they just came to each other for possible Good things? Good question. Because like, I actually, I think we asked that before, going like, when did they stop sleeping in the same room? Because, yeah, they did talk about going, okay, so Lucio has his room, and then Nadia has her own, and... But, like, it doesn't sound like they were always that way. No. It sounds like at some point it changed, so I would assume... If he's like he is, he would have kicked her out because he's entitled to fancy things. Mm -hmm. So it'd be, quote, his old room, which is also their old room. I would imagine also that would have been uh, poised as some sort of punishment that Nadia couldn't quite figure out basically what she'd done wrong. It'd be him lording it over her in a passive-aggressive, abusive way. Yes. yes. Based on how she describes him. Mm-hmm. Awaits. Awaits. Oh, it's a whole chapter. Chapter two. Haunting, haunting taunting. taunting. Oh. Haunting taunting. Haunty taunty. It's a haunty taunty. It's a hoity toity. <laughs> it's a, it's, we have a hoity toity and a haunty taunty. Woo! Hi. Would you like your party to be hoity toity or, you know, kind of seasonal haunty taunty? I mean, we're coming up to the haunty taunties. It's true. In a couple of months, it'll be Halloween, and I just need so to pick excited. out Halloween games immediately. And now, I want there to be more Halloween games. I like, wish specifically, there were. I get their niche. I get their seasonal. I don't care. I if I ever make a large piece of media, it's going to be set completely in Halloween time, and I don't care if people are like, well, I really only read it around that time of year. Don't care. Really, only play it around that time of year. I want Halloween all year, so I would play it at other times of the year mm -hmm. or read it or whatever kind of media it is. So you know what? Halloween. Also, uh, we have recommendations then for another uh, uh, Halloween thing that you can enjoy if you actually go, it's a theme. We should all watch Halloween related things on Halloween, right? Oh, yeah. So we recently, or at least me, uh, we, my friend and I, we were actually going shopping and I went thrift shopping with her. Mm -hmm. And um, I found Blood the Last Vampire, which depending on your age and depending on where you're from, that might mean a lot to you. It might literally mean nothing to you. At any rate, it's a standalone anime movie back from maybe the 90s or something. Yeah. I'm not 100%, I was going to say, but... Um, it's considered one of, at least in the United States, one of the, quote, foundational animes you should show people. And the thing is, is it's a horror anime about a vampire, and it actually happens on, on Halloween. Halloween. So it's literally a Halloween movie because it's spooky, and it's actually on Halloween. There's a Halloween party and costumes and everything. Yes. So, Halloween movie. Here you go. Um, <clears throat> the Countess is waiting for us. Um, <clears throat> the Countess is waiting. I can, I can accent. I, I can accent. Is... It's okay. The Countess is waiting for us, pacing at the foot of the ominous I'm staircase. Sorry for the posh. <laughs> when we arrive, Asram, Koheim, are the robes adequate? You requested comfortable dress. I what? I always put everyone in everything uh, in that robe always for bathing, but those aren't the bathing robes anymore. Those are now. Post bathing robes, which look the same as the bathing robes, but are dry, and that's the only comfortable thing I have. What? So when Astro leaned in and quietly requested the room thing and arrangements that he did, um, he but also you requested didn't know comfortable you clothes. You weren't going to go to the baths yet. Yeah, that doesn't work. No, but so, he also requested comfortable clothes for the room, I guess. Yeah, but the thing is, is remember how we ran into a note that said that we don't have clothes ready for you yet. Uh huh. The robes will suffice. But remember, if he said this isn't what I expected us to be wearing. He could have been like, I'm also requesting fancy, comfortable garments from you, and neither those or your clean clothes are ready. But that sounds like a stretch. That sounds like way too so, much. So yeah, I was just say going, I hope the robes are adequate, requested, one, when would he have requested comfortable dress? Two, why? Because he would have, he leaned in and whispered whatever his thing was before we were having a bath. Maybe she's really checking, point. going like, I'm trying not to basically admit that, you know, we're slow on things. So how are you doing? Is this Okay. So maybe that could be her sort of trying to walk around the but, awkwardness of going, I've put you in bathing robes and I don't have anything else for you. So are you all right? <laughs> I can see saying, are the robes adequate? But you requested comfortable dress suggests that at some point Astro requested new clothing for them. And when there was no plan to bathe, why would he do that? Yeah. <laughs> Bless you. Pardon, sorry. Bless you. Because also, again, you can say, this sounds like bathe together. Bathe uh, separately or, or stay, stay dirty. dirty, which... And the thing is, is I... if you decide not to bathe, 
which stay dirty is kind of an aggressive way to say that, or Whoa. perhaps a funny joke in some people's minds. Uncomfortable to me, who finds hygiene really necessary because of Ew. reasons. At any rate, I don't know when he would have ever requested these. Stinky and I, it feels like the assumption is that you were, that it feels like the writers absolutely knew you were going to have a bath or a bath offer at some point. And so he requested it before knowing it existed. And he's not into divination, so this feels like an error. Yeah, this feels weird. But it's fine. We requested dress at some point. Ah, very comfortable, Countess. Especially now that we have dry ones after bathing in the wet ones. Or they started dry and then we got them wet. But then we switched to these dry ones. And even though we were wet and didn't use towels, I think? Question mark? No, we did. We used towels while we were in the other robes. And I don't remember changing robes. I think this is the same damp robe that I was in when I took a bath. So you're so still it's slightly still moist. Damp. Moist. And my hair is definitely damp because it's quite long and thick. So, mm. what I am is le not so much super comfy, but I am casual and moist. <laughs> <laughs> Casually moist. Right. Sure. And if, if I dug my fingers into Asper's hair, like I would not do right now at all, <clears throat> I am quite sure that the roots would be done. Mm. Just saying it conceptually, you know. Why mm. did we not use the blowing off spell? The drying off The spell. drying spell. I'm right. so... We yeah. made such a fucking deal of it. And for some reason, we're just like, we will be wet. I know. La, la, la. I'm like, why? We literally learned there is a dry yourself now spell back in the cave. Oh my God. So the fact that they don't use it here is a real missed opportunity. Because especially like suddenly it was like, I'm going to use spells for fucking everything. Like the, the, I thought our joke was funny, but also the fact that like it isn't even used here is nope. like weirdly disappointing. Yep. It's just like, I don't... It's fine. I'm just like, he, 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 he. As I don't feel his presence down here. As far as I can tell, no one is listening. I, I thought before you weren't really sure. That's why you were like, anyone could be doing anything. You need to be really careful. Like, we were out in the garden. Mm -hmm. Like, he seemed like he was definitely not secure in anyone is like... Who like, I can't who not detect overhear us. whether people are here or not. Yeah. But here, my best detection is I, I don't think so. It's fine. We can just talk about shit. Well, again, as far as I can tell, what does your ability tell? Really none at all. So... At least in the bedroom, he had the, I guess, thought to sort of lean forward and warn you. Maybe it's easier in buildings. Maybe in his history with He was in the bedroom at with you. Point, <laughs> He, That's uh, inside the building, right? He put awareness charms in here so he can detect things better when he's here. Who knows? <laughs> listening! I said, no one is listening. Then, I have many questions. What exactly are we planning to do up there? Uh, we're going to make him come out. Because he's been closeted for far too long? It didn't say we were post-sexuality, only gender. Mm. How do you have a sexual identity if there's no genders? Because, like, in the um, exterior world, if you're playing, the, if you're in the game, I, I would say, they, all sexuality is oriented around the gender structure. So if you don't have a gender structure, do you have sexualities anymore? Maybe he's in the closet about his true feelings on something. Who he really is. Maybe he's hiding himself and it has nothing to do with his orientation. The thing is, is I feel like we are asking way too many complex questions about something where they're like, we're trying to just be hot, damn it. As far as I can <laughs> tell, everyone in the game is pansexual, so that's fine. Which is fine, but also, again, there is there is something to be said about specifically having games where they do actually have set sexualities. And people have actually talked about that before, going, it is actually important. It can be really valuable to just have a lesbian. Because and if you have a boy character, she won't date him. And, and the reason why they talk about that is, though, is also because then you can actually definitively write from a very specific experience. Mm -hmm. And it can actually then actually be queer rather than going, it doesn't matter. Like, we tell you that, you know, who you are will be respected, blah, blah, blah. But it literally doesn't affect the plot. You are not even really thought of. And we have you no could be... specific character representation of that orientation. Yeah. You just have everyone's into whoever and there is no personality formed around it. Yeah. Which in your real life, because of the way culture works, it really does shape some of your personality and experience. Right? Come out. We're going to make him come out. Yes. That is what you said. I suppose, I mean, how uh, or to what end? Uh, I'm, that's, that's more what I want to know. Hmm. How and to what end? Two separate questions. Those are very two different 
Excuse me, I'm getting ding dong. It's okay, just just put it on mute and don't worry about it. Uh, I can't. It's oh. specifically uh, very something else. Yeah, it's something okay. Else. Well, sorry. Okay, uh, to see what we can learn, the creature from your dreams isn't just Lucio. I, mm -hmm. It is more than Lucio somehow. Uh, it's Lucio trying to be an Arcana. Now that we've learned, it's Luciana. Luciana. Arcana. I'm not sure what it is yet. It's not a ghost, but it definitely has his personality, okay. which, as you said. They are kind of seem to basically latch on to people who are most like them, which again actually leaves me in a funny spot because I go, the devil seems far more competent or far more highbrow than Lucio, based the on the Lucio that you talk to versus the one that they talk about. Less whiny. Yes. They both monologue, but like I've never seen the devil go, Oh, uh, why won't you let me hurt you? Yeah. Just sit down and be whipped, all right? Like, yeah. Like, I, f I find that actually to be very fascinating. I'm just like, was there a lot of like backpedaling going, oh God, we don't actually know how to write this convincingly, or that to or actually a, do it uh, would be really horrible? Or it could be the devil's evil, Lucio's evil. That's what they have in common. And then their right. personalities can be absolutely anything because that's what they have in common. Now, the thing is, is right. it doesn't mean that, that the writers thought of either or both of them as evil. But that is that is a, a possible, like, generic label of going, the big primary personality thing they have in common is, is evil. this giant label that to us encompasses everything and the personality then doesn't matter. Right. Like, you are a bad guy. The devil's a bad guy. That's what you have in common. Astro is mysterious. The, the magician, magician is, is mysterious. mysterious. That's what you have in common. And I don't know what she, she has in common with... The owl in a really like clippy way like real in a real quick um like meany kind of way maybe they both like to take breaks frequently the owl never talks to you very long it, i don't know i don't know either um perhaps they both like to invent things except they never mention the owl invents oh no anything. i know that i know that anyway so definitely has his personality if we tease his ego, he'll come out. And if that's not enough, the thing is, is so you not say, if we test do his ego, actually... not challenge his ego, not insult him or wear him down or pander to his pride well, or, or hurt his pride, it's if we tease his ego. What does tease mean? Um, tease can also, like, you can, you can use it neutrally. But I think in this case, you're meant to probably take it as, like, tease it of going, like, we're not trying to aggressively piss him off because that could cause a problem, but you are trying to basically, you know... Pick at the edges. Pick at him okay. enough to get him to show up. Okay. You know, <clears throat> that dream of yours gave me an idea. Whatever form he's in, he feels hunger. Ooh. Okay, that's awful. Okay. I, I did, but he's thoughtful. And so, food, I guess. I, I guess. If the food is somewhere unattended, could he maybe not have already gone to it? Either that or I know there is someone small and hungry in this castle. If we have a bunch of food and attended somewhere, maybe she would eat it. Query. Hmm. Where did the food thing come up from? Because you talked about he was in the castle, like, like drooling. Oh, and she's so banging on the kitchen, yeah, yelling, uh -huh. screaming in yeah, her dream. Right, 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 right. That's okay. I did not take it as that was what was going on at all. It just sounded like he was having a tantrum in the kitchen for reasons. Yeah. Because there was no descriptor of him whining about wanting to eat. I'm hungry, feed it me was, It just sounded like he was basically being a poltergeist and fucking up the kitchen because that's what he could do. I still want to say that there is someone small that has complete access to the castle and is a very hungry person here, so if there's unattended food, <laughs> it might not be there anymore. <laughs> is she very hungry? Uh, she eats all the things. So, goes into the room that's been prepared for them. All of it is empty plates. And there's one sad little Volta going, he's so good. <laughs> oh, no. He's still more no. food. A little soft crying in the corner. Oh, no. no. He's so so gone. gone. <clears throat> we take the first step, and an unearthly moan floats down from above. He's fault at eating happily. Shaking the candelabras. My every hair rises. Even the really damp, heavy ones. As was too, as he takes a half step in front of me. The countess's flashing eyes pierce the shadows. How do you know that? Are you her you, you both heard that. That was a statement, not a question. You both heard that? Asra looks to me, nodding, when I do. Lydia narrows her penetrating gaze and 
leads the way to the top of the stairs. I'm surprised the dogs aren't at the bottom of the stairs. Again. The hall above is stagnant and dry, drawing the life out of us. The walls are lined with portraits. Portraits that we don't get to see, sadly. I know, we never get to see them. They are all very much the same. Blonde hair and gold leaf and red, but all ruined. Because he is the beast. He is the beast. Something has messily torn the eyes out of every face. It's okay, the one in the parlor is ruined as well, because even though the eyes aren't torn out, they've been turned into a small door. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't that one, it was the portrait in the, in the room, remember, of the woman? Like I said, in the parlor, that place that you met all But that's the... not him. No, no, I'm not saying it's him, I'm just saying it's also a ruined portrait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also yeah, a true. ruined portrait, that's why it hasn't come. When did all this happen? I... Uh, I don't know. Sometime after I woke from my sleep, though I had a dream. I had a dream. And we're going to find out what that dream is. In, in the, the next, next one. one. We've hey. heard about several of her dreams, but we're going to hear about yet another. Yeah. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. If you like what we do, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share our stuff. It actually does a lot when you do so. It does. Uh, we have appreciated all the sharing so far. Uh, please also feel free to go check out our Ko-Fi and our Patreon and our Twitch, where we play games live. We would love to see you there. And um, I have been Scandal. And if you ever do come to the Twitch and you don't feel like you want to talk, but you want to hang and listen, we support that too. Absolutely, we love lurkers. And I, I have been lies. And, and it was great playing with you. Bye! Bye.